distinguished guests and honorees. It's my pleasure to be with you this evening. I'd like to first uh, congratulate Dr. Tucker and thank CRDF for recognizing both of these individuals. Earlier in my career, I had the opportunity to hear George Brown give a talk on his hopes and aspirations for what international collaboration could accomplish around the world. I believe that Dr. Safra Lerman epitomizes those hopes and dreams that George Brown had for international collaborations. It's been my pleasure to work with her over the past years and to observe her dedication and commitment to that very important cause. Even less a week ago today, we were in Russia, and I was amazed and, and very impressed with the esteem with which the Russian scientists uphold her today, and I've observed that around the world. Her dedication and commitment to uh, developing and improving the ability of scientists around the world is very evident. You can only talk to Dr. Lerman for a very short time and her work is contagious. She believes that the key to developing peace and understanding at the international level will come from opportunities for scientists to pave the way through their work and to link it back to their governments. She has championed the importance of international collaboration in science for many decades, starting with the Soviet Union and continuing with China, South Africa, Kenya, Russia, Cuba, and other countries. She believes strongly that scientific collaboration and communication between countries can bring stability to our world, rather than isolation and lack of contact. In the past several years, Zafra has turned her focus to bringing Middle Eastern scientists together to begin the basis for promoting serious cooperation and communication in the future, using science as a bridge to build peace in the Middle East. Cross-border scientific collaboration in the volatile Middle East is essential for the national security of the United States. She believes strongly that achieving collaboration between American scientists and Middle Eastern scientists is vital to our understanding of the history, culture, geography, and the regions of the Middle East. Since 2001, she has worked incessantly to, on fostering and sustaining scientific collaboration in that area. She was instrumental in persuading the American Chemical Society, the Royal Society of Chemistry in England, the German Chemical Society, and the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry co-sponsor a series of conferences titled Frontiers of Chemical Research and Education in the Middle East, A Bridge to Peace. She organized, raised the funds, and chaired the first two conferences held on the island of Malta in 2003 and 2005. She chose Malta because it was an area where if you remember 2003, shortly after 2001, it was still a very difficult time for scientists in those areas to travel. So she was able to pull it off, and each of these conferences brought together scientists from the U.S. and the Middle East. Our first conference brought together 35 scientists from the countries of Israel, Iran, Bahrain, Egypt, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, the Palestinian Authority, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and the United Arab Emirates, along with the six Nobel laureates who came from the U.S., France, Taiwan, Israel, and Switzerland. In our second conference, there were 55 scientists represented there. She has spent this last year organizing another conference which will be held in Turkey in December 2006. It's very important, as Zafra believes, she understands the culture and she knows it's very important that we bring all the scientists together on an equal level. So that's why we work so hard and she has worked so hard to bring, to raise the funds to organize these conferences. These conferences were the first time for many of those scientists from the Middle East to have the opportunity to work together. And from those conferences have come collaborations 
in areas of environmental science and education. We had never before have we seen scientists work together from those regions. She's continued her efforts with Cuba as well as with the Middle East. And if you read your program at the very end, I think the words uh, very much epitomize what Dr. Lerman is all about, that the potential for combined efforts to improve human lives through chemistry has been her life's work. But I'd like to rephrase the vision of the American Chemical Society, which states you know, that chemistry is all about improving people's lives through the transforming power of chemistry. But I believe we're here tonight to recognize that Sakura Lerman is all about improving people's lives through the transforming power of Lerman. So thank you all for being here tonight and helping me to recognize Dr. Lerman. Thank you. Everyone in the world. 
events in the region burst into violence daily, consuming lives and resources while threatening a far wider conflagration. Despite these unfortunate and tense circumstances, there is some light at the end of this dark tunnel. Like other Americans who foster social change, I too had a dream. The fulfillment of this dream was seen in two major international conferences titled Frontiers of Chemical Sciences, Research and Education in the Middle East, A Bridge to Peace, with the third upcoming in December 2007. Scientists from 14 Middle East nations are meeting with American and European scientists to discuss issues of scientific cooperation and collaboration. Overcoming initial suspicions, the growing list of participants appears more like a family than representatives from opposing nations. Israelis and Palestinians are sitting together in a friendly atmosphere discussing how to solve issues of air and water quality. Israelis and Saudis are collaborating on medicinal chemistry. And scientists from all the Middle Eastern countries are working together on a joint science curriculum. The success of these conferences proves that science can contribute to understanding and cooperation between scientists from countries that are hostile toward each other. Billions of dollars are allocated each year to building weapons of mass destruction. Just a fraction of these funds dedicated to international scientific cooperation and collaboration that materially affect the quality of life of people in the Middle East will go a great distance in bringing peace to the Middle East. Again, I would like to thank the CRDF and everyone who was able to join us here today. Thank you very much.